So good morning, everybody. Thanks so much for coming early this morning. Um, so Dr. Harvey and President Jeffrey Giese are both here to address the report that was finalized at last night's meeting, and that is the purpose of this press conference, and that's what they'll be addressing this morning. Would you like to go ahead and introduce yourselves? Okay. Uh, good morning, Jeffrey Hastings, uh, President of School Board, Cities District of New Rochelle. Magda Parvey, Interim Superintendent of School City, School District of New Rochelle. If you guys don't mind, just talking a little bit loud. A little louder, sure, sure. Do you sure. want me to move the mics closer? No. No, it's fine. Okay, just talk. Okay. Just, just talk, talk loud. Just talk loud. Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking okay. to my kids. Got it. <laughs> Got it. Favor, could you just start by explaining what was the center of this investigation? What is APEX? What, what's an easy way to explain to parents what this credit recovery system is? Sure. Um, I'll start first. So APEX is a system that we um, have in the high school that's really for online course studies. So it's not just uh, credit recovery, but they're also um, AP courses, um, high level courses that students take. So when students can't fit a certain course in their schedule, they'll take the, um, a course online at APEX. So how, that's what the system is. How common is this in high schools across Westchester County? Um, across Westchester County, pretty common. Yeah. It's very common. From what I read, I'm sorry, go ahead. from what I read, uh, there's what, 40 plus courses that they could take? Uh, no, it's more than 40 courses. Oh, there is. Yeah. Tell us some of the courses. Um, traditional classes, English, math, um, art. So there are a variety of classes that can be offered um, on the program based on the courses we offer in the um, high school. Okay. So what broke down here and what were the consequences? Um, so first what broke down was this uh, process and procedures that we did not have in place to make sure and ensure that the grading uh, system was accurate and, and, and correct. So that's mainly what, kind of what the breakdown was um, in our system. And as a consequence, what happened? Um, well, right now, as you see in the report, that we are um, uh, we started the process of determining the coordinator for the uh, uh, for the system, um, and we have to the person that's pro probationary employee, so we have to do go through the uh, sixty day process to do that. What is the coordinator alleged to have done? Um, as you see in the report, the, what she has done is done change grades for uh, students without the proper author uh, um, authority. Why would she do that? Uh, you'll have to ask her that question. How does it help the school? having these grades inflated? Like, does it help the school system? Is there like a quota that they, the school needed to match or something like that? How does, it, how, how does what she did help? Do you want me to explain sure. that? Um, so it wasn't necessarily great inflation. You'll see in the report that there are a number of times that there were changes that didn't necessarily equate to something. So um, the issue was just the manipulating of grades in general, not necessarily that there was great inflation. And you will see that the report speaks to that. Well, what's the incentive to manipulate grades, Dr. Parvey? Um, again, we can't speak to intent, um, um, and we won't. Essentially, um, what it looks like is there was a lack of understanding of the program, and we really can't speak to the reason why, and I would say that the report is also inconclusive with regard to why, because we can't speak to someone's motive. So one of the reforms is that you're, you now have multiple adults looking at this before a grade is changed, correct? Multiple adults looking at it before grade is changed, a course is approved, the process, so there are multiple checks and balances that are now going to be put in place. Okay. When you got the system from APEX, did they say to you, here are our best practices, you should implement these, and having multiple people check is one of them? That is an excellent question. Part of the issue that we've been faced with in this situation was that apparently um, the school essentially purchased this program without um, training for staff, without set procedures in place. Um, and so they were kind of just going essentially a little bit by the seat of their pants, so to say. And so they were learning as they went along. So there are intricacies within the actual system that people hadn't mastered and understood prior to going through this process. Who advocated or approved the purchase of this system? Um, Unfortunately, it was before my time in the district, so I can't say for certain, but I would say that, um, I, I can't say for certain. Mr. Honestly. Hasty? Um, I can't say for certain either. I think the, uh, I you can't say just investigated the system and you can't say who approved it or advocated for it? No, we know that it was approved at um, the school and it had to be approved by the district, but I would not put anybody's name to anything, not having been here and knowing how the system came to be. But APEX is a recognized online credit recovery um, or online learning platform that is used and used actually nationwide. 
it seems to me that the principal should have been in charge of overseeing the training that should have been in place and the practice and procedures that should have followed with this program. Why was it that he was able to leave the district with $160,000 and not be held accountable as part of this investigation? Um, so I'll, I'll speak, mm -hmm. uh, speak to that. Um, you know, as far as him leaving and then not being accountable, I mean, he, he resigned before the, the report was finished, so um, we can't speak to what kind of repercussions he would have had if he was still employed um, when the, the report came out. So we can't, we did not have any control about when he left the district. But can I just add to that, which mm -hmm. is that the board did sign a separation agreement with him that guaranteed that he was paid money as part of his decision to leave. Correct, yes. So the question is? That why did you allow that? If you knew that he was under the purview of this investigation? Um, because it was in the best interest of the district at the time. Um, uh, oh, sorry, one other thing. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, one other thing you mentioned last night is that you would plan to or have already sent the uh, report to the state education department. Have you done that? And have you been in contact with them? Have they? Been in touch with you at all to this point? They haven't been in touch with us. We haven't contacted them. We just got the report uh, the day before yesterday, and so we'll be sending it out. Shortly. I'm not trying to toot my own horn here by any stretch of the imagination. I graduated from Nershaw High School 30 years ago. Great. Has there ever <laughs> been a scandal like this in the time that since mm -hmm. I've left Nershaw High School? Uh, you might have a better handle than that. <laughs> so right. no. uh, as far as I know, not. I've been here in Nershaw for 20 years, so yeah. nothing to this extent. Did any, were any students able to graduate um, because of the manipulation of the grades? Did it give any students, kind of get them over the finish line? So as the report indicates, there were 32 students whose uh, grades were, were altered uh, by the coordinator. Um, of those 32, 21 graduated this past year. Of the 21, two um, may not have graduated. They did not have those um, grades from the APEC system. Um, did they drill down into how uh, the coordinator was hired, given her uh, history in New York City schools? Uh, the, the, the investigators? No, that was not part of the investigators' responsibility. Do you have any concerns on that front, sir? Do I have any concerns on the front of hiring? Yes. Um, we, we always take a look at our practices and policies. We're in the process right now, go through all of our policies and reviewing and bringing them up to date. So that'll be something that'll be on the table at some point. Second part of my question, how does this affect the reputation of the school, the scandal? Um, well, right now, I think what we're doing is trying to show that we are open and transparent um, and rebuilding the trust with the community. So the first step is releasing this report, taking action, um, we're, taking the, uh, we're taking a look at our policies and procedures when it comes to online courses. We're, as we said in our um, report last night, that we are going to send that to New York State to have them review that as well. So not only look at the, the report, but also help us with making sure that we put policies and procedures in place that make sense. One of the things you mentioned last night, I think, was that there would be someone who oversees the program, I think, going forward. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, or has that person been identified? No, not at this time. Okay. We want to go through a much more stringent process, so not at this time. How important is it that um, the grades that are given be legitimate? <laughs> Very important, yeah. <laughs> that's, I mean, obviously, if, the, if that's not, then, then we, we, we should be in the business of education. So uh, the grades and the validity of the grades are very important to us. Yeah. That's why we took this seriously and did this investigation. Absolutely. What did you make of Ms. Alvarez's comments last night? Um, I'll, I'm not going to comment on that. Right. I think Man. they were hers to make. Yeah. She seemed to indicate this is all some big misunderstanding that she can explain away. Uh, well, I think the report speaks for itself as far as that's concerned. Uh, Dr. Parvey, uh, you uh, have been, since 2016, the Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum Instruction, which includes uh, the high school. So what is your role and responsibility in all of this? Well, I would say that we all take responsibility for this and also learning this is a valuable lesson learned in terms of something that wasn't being watched, and now we know that we need to keep our eye on it. And what is your message to uh, administrators across the district who um, may be looking at ways to cut corners similarly? <laughs> well, we believe that um, our administrators, for the most part, are definitely um, 
very good at process and procedure. Um, we're a huge system, and so in this process, something um, was missed. But our message to administrators would be that we expect them to communicate with us and that we always, um, accountability is always at the forefront. We have professionals in place and accountability is important. And, and sir, um, my experience with you is that you're pretty straightforward and pretty low key. Mm -hmm. Are you upset by what has happened here? It just kind of seems like, a, oh well, this is it. Oh gosh, no, I'm extremely upset. I'm extremely upset with this. Again, this in, in, in impugns the integrity of the people that work in the district and a lot of hardworking individuals in this district. And um, I think you know, something like this besmirches all of them. So we're very concerned about that. So, I mean, again, the fact that we have uh, did the investigation, we released a report unredacted, and we're making progress going forward. So yes, I'm extremely upset and annoyed by it, um, but I'm focused now on making sure that we have process and procedures in place going forward. I ask you a question about the report itself. It said in there that the investigators at TNM had sought other information for other house principals but weren't able to get it from APEX, so they couldn't look if changes had been made in other houses over the past few years. Uh, are you having TNM go pursue that as a phase two, or are you pulling up that information yourself? Is anybody going to take a look at whether other house principals did the same thing? Um, again, as we said, we, the report is complete and final. We're sending that to New York State Education so for further review by them. The two students who shouldn't have graduated, um, but Wait, well, right, well, French should, should they, That's inconclusive. They shouldn't have graduated. Right, but they've, all intents and purposes, are graduates now. Yeah. What will happen to them? What will happen to their record? I mean, because it, it's a graduation that they didn't earn. Um, I, again, we can't say that. We just the report's inconclusive about whether they should have graduated or not. We just know that those credits were needed for graduation, but we can't say that they would have graduated or not. So at this point, nothing's going to be going on with those two students. So they get to keep their diploma. Uh, there was a part in the report that said uh, it appeared that uh, a transcript had been physically altered with whiteout, that font didn't match. Um, so. Has anyone taken, first of all, have you, either of you seen that actual transcript that was physically altered with whiteout? And has anybody reviewed all the other transcripts to see if there were similar changes made to those? Um, so I, I honestly can't recall if that was one of the exhibits in the report, and, and, um, so it might not have been. Um, I have not seen that. Again, that was change was for a student that had already graduated, and. Um, the, a, the online system essentially is supposed to give a pass-fail grade uh, for any course that you take, and the change was made from a numeric grade to a pass-fail grade. So that's what the change that happened in that, that transcript. But again, it was a student that had already graduated. And uh, yeah, well, just to follow up on that, sure. but the, the transcript itself was physically altered with whiteout, and it looks like maybe somebody typed over it. So I'm not really asking by the fact that it was changed, but that you have transcripts which are sort of sacrosanct in education. Uh, being physically altered, and I'm just asking if you, anybody went back to look to see if there was any other transcripts that had been similarly altered. Um, and I can't speak to that. I, all I can do is what's in the report, so. Uh, as you undoubtedly know, there's a high level of anxiety in New Rochelle, given a series of events. Uh, people make their lives here. A lot of us chose this community for reasons including the school system. Mm -hmm. um, what is your message to parents um, on, it, on you know, what can only be described as another black eye for the district? Well, our message to parents is that our teachers do have integrity and put educating students at the forefront at all times, and that this is the first step in restoring trust, and that we do have a great school system in which we've graduated um, students and that have had high accomplishments, and that we want to keep that at the forefront, and we will continue to work on trust, but our system is sound, and we're putting practices in place to ensure that. And the district is, are you all planning on moving forward with a credit recovery program, Ingenuity, I assume, uh, next semester, or is it already underway? So um, staff members are currently being trained by BOCES. It's a partnership with BOCES. So we're in the process of making sure that all of our systems are in place before launching. But the hope is to launch this year. Or uh, this school year. This school year, yes. Great. Again, we want to get New York State Education Department's uh, view on our policies and practices, make sure that it's sound. Okay. Any other 
a question? Um, based on what you know now, should this coordinator, uh, House 4 principal, have been hired in the first place? I, you know, based on what we know now, I mean, I can't, uh, hindsight is always twenty twenty. so we have to be comfortable with the practice that we use going forward. And again, we, along with the other policies that we review on a regular basis, we'll be reviewing our hiring processes as well going forward. Uh, can I ask also about the school that uh, Shadi Alvarez came from, was Collegiate in the Bronx. Uh, there was an investigation that, uh, you know, several people there got in trouble. Uh, in the SCI investigation, one other person took the Fifth Amendment. Um, would you have any issue with uh, hiring people that came out of that school at that time when Shadi Alvarez was running it? Shady Alvarez was the principal of Collegiate uh, in the Bronx, and uh, there was several, three investigations of uh, Ernst and Young audit and OSI investigation, SCI investigation, that found significant wrongdoing on her watch. Uh, one of her subordinates uh, was uh, banned from uh, the city school district that she took the Fifth Amendment during investigation. And I'm asking if we you would have any concerns about hiring anyone out of Collegiate uh, that was working there under Shadi Alvarez. Well, this, this is clearly not is. connected to this report, right. which is what this news conference is about. So. I don't think we want to go completely off the rails. So if anybody has anything else about the report, we're good? Okay, great. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Thank you. Yes. <clears throat>